truth. It's the Word of God. So when you're baptized with the Spirit, you're baptized with the Word of God. And it causes you to do something. Look here in, in 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. We're talking to a Gentile church, aren't we? If you lived in Corinth before Jesus died on the cross, you had to be washed in water if you were going to become and go through this new birth into the kingdom, right? You had to be washed in water. Well, Paul is over here washing some Corinthians in water, doing the proselyte baptism on them, but he says it's time to quit. You have to understand, when Jesus was nailed to the cross, everybody didn't quit all at once. Everybody did not understand this all at once, did they? So there was kind of a jagged quitting. Oh, let's we'll keep doing this stuff. Let's break it down to this. And they finally get it down to... And they, Paul's still doing Pentecost. He's still doing Passover. He's still doing all of this. And there's a spiritual Passover, isn't there? There's a spiritual Pentecost. That's when we're baptized with the Word of God. That's what spiritual Pentecost is. Now look here. Look here in verse 14. He's talking to a Corinthian church and he's saying, there's some of you there that I washed with a proselyte baptism, but I'm stopping because Christ didn't send me to do this. Now, I've heard explanation of this being given by, even by a Greek scholar like Spiro Zadiates, and I heard him on the radio one day. He said, now, Paul wasn't sent to wash people in water, baptize them, because he didn't have time to do that. That's not what this says. That's not what it says. I disagree with Mr. Zadiates on that completely. And he's a sweet old man. You can listen to him in the afternoon on WNQM and he'll go real slow and he won't give you enough Greek to fill you up over five years. But he does know his Greek. He is a Greek man. But I don't believe he knows what he's talking about here. I thank God that I baptized none of you but Christmas and guys. If water was something that we're supposed to be doing, they certainly wouldn't be saying, I thank God I baptized none of you spiritually but Crispus and guys. He certainly couldn't mean that here, could he? No. He's saying, I thank God I didn't wash any of you in water except Crispus and guys, lest any should say I had washed in my own name, and I washed also the household of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I washed any other for Christ sent me not to do this. Isn't that amazing? Christ didn't send me to baptize people in water, but to preach the gospel. Well, let's go, hold your place right there and look at Matthew, the 28th chapter. Look at Matthew, the 28th chapter. Paul is saying Christ didn't send me to wash people in water. Didn't he say that? He said. Huh? He said. That's what he said. But look here what Jesus, what does Jesus say here in Matthew 28? Jesus is speaking to the apostles after his resurrection. Verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in. Now that word baptize is not a verb. It's a participle. These are baptizing apostles. In this case, this participle is, it's a verbal adjective. It tells you what kind of apostles they are. They're baptizing apostles. How are they doing it? Not in water. I'll show you in a moment. Baptizing them in the name. Now that word in there is the word ease. East. It means to sink into or to sink into clothing at the very most. As many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on, in duo, sink into clothing, have put on Christ. I can't see how people can think these verses are H2O. I don't understand. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. Now Paul, as of this point, is not a convert, is he? Not till the ninth chapter of Acts. Paul is not converted yet. Would, would Paul be included in this? Is Jesus saying, go tell Paul to baptize, to be a baptizing Paul? Is he saying that? No, I'm saying, 
Is he saying in this context, tell everyone to be baptizing? Isn't he saying that? Can anybody give me the answer? Is he telling us to go tell everybody to baptize? Huh? I'm not saying in water. Didn't say in water. See, you've got water on the brain, don't you? You thought I was talking about water. No. I said, is Jesus telling us to go baptize everyone and tell them to do the same thing? He's saying, go tell Paul. Even though they don't know Paul, Paul is one of the nations, one of the people in the world out there, isn't he? And be a baptizing Paul, correct? Well, wait a minute. Paul said, Christ sent me not to baptize in water. Jesus cannot possibly be meaning water here in 28, 19 because Paul said Christ didn't send me to do this. Did he, is he saying that? That's what he's saying. He did not send me to wash people in water but to preach the gospel. Huh? Then preaching the gospels of baptism. Is Paul, if Paul means water and Jesus means water, one of them is lying. Isn't that right? If they both mean water, you see, Jesus isn't talking about water. Paul is talking about water in 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. He's saying, Christ sent me not to wash people in water, but to preach the gospel. Well, what is preaching the gospel? Mark, the first chapter, the first verse. The beginning of the gospel as it was written in the prophets prepare you the way of the Lord, make his path straight. That's the beginning of the gospel, and that's also the baptism of repentance, according to the third chapter of Luke. When John said, when the Bible says, John came preaching the baptism of repentance, as it was written in the book of Isaiah, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. The gospel, the gospel is prepare, prepare, way of the Lord, the baptism, baptism of repentance is prepare the way of the Lord. So Paul said, Christ sent me to preach the gospel, which is the baptism of repentance. When Jesus says what he says in Matthew 28, 19, he's talking about going into all the world, baptizing them. He's not talking about dipping them in water. He's talking about there's some sort of a baptism. I wonder what it is. I think it's the Word of God, isn't it? Look over here in Romans the fifth. How much time do I have? I'm not going to have time to get into everything I want to. I'm going to come back next week and show you what the proof that you have the Holy Spirit. We're going to go through the Holy Spirit in the New Testament and the Holy Ghost. They're the same word, Haggai's Numa. That's right. And everybody was telling him he was stupid and That's right. He died to self or whatever. He yep. what everybody else believed. That's right. He didn't believe the word. He was pitching himself. He was pitching himself within and without with pitch. That's right. He was pitched with the gospel, and there's going to be few. And I'm not saying you have to understand baptism. What's really amazing is nobody understands it. Nobody understands. Once John said, Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Ghost, we forgot it. I keep saying that every week. We just said, okay, he'll baptize the Holy Ghost. Where's my water? You know what we do? And we have forgotten the Holy Spirit or truth and the old baptism, the water was blotted out. The true baptism is blood. Are you washed in the blood? He's washed us from our sins in his own blood in Revelation, the first chapter. What do you think baptism is? We sing, are you washed in the blood? And we don't know anything that it means, do we? We don't have any idea. It's a death, a dying. And without it, there's no salvation. You have to be baptized to be saved, but not in H2O. That don't mean a thing. That's plain, that Yeah. <laughs> it is. Brother Blue. Now, where was I taking y'all? 
Romans, the fifth chapter. I forgot where I was. Romans 5. Remember in the Old Testament, you've got to remember this, because you, you can't get by without it. Now, and, I've, and I'm just getting started on this spiritual baptism. You think we can understand this quick? No. And everybody's afraid of it. The Baptist that I was raised was afraid of it. My father's afraid of it. He thought if he studied spiritual baptism, he had to become a Pentecostal. That's what all the Baptists think. In the Church of Christ called water baptism, spiritual baptism. They say, they say, you're baptized in the Spirit. No, it's one part hydrogen, two parts oxygen. Not Spirit. That's not the Word of God. That water is not the Word of God. And the Baptists say, go deal with it at all. And the Pentecostals have messed it up royally. And I don't hear anybody except these two guys know something about it. Thank God for them. I've got to go back and give you some stuff. They say some magnificent things. Uh... This Harry Botema. I don't even know what denomination they are, and they may teach something that I totally disagree with. I don't even know if they believe predestination, but they understand baptism. Don't even care what denomination. Don't care if a man is a Roman Catholic priest. If he says the truth, I'll say that's the truth. Don't care if it's Kenneth Copeland. Once in a while, he'll be preaching, and I don't like that man. And I'll go, oh, wait, hey, he said something true. And all of a sudden, I realize he's reading from his Bible. I'm going, oh, oh, okay. That's really the only time I hear him say any truth. <laughs> Just lies. Now, Romans 5. Remember in the Old Testament, kafar. Kafar is the word. Kafar with kofar. That's pitch. Pitch with pitch. This second word pitch means to stain with a dye. And that's what the ark was. Stained and dyed. And kafar means to cover. And kafar is the same word as atonement. So baptism is atonement. And on the day of atonement, the tenth day of the seventh month, the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of the Covenant, was pitched, was sprinkled with the blood. And now our hearts are washed. Our hearts are sprinkled. Our hearts... Our hearts are the spiritual Ark of the Covenant because the law was written on tables of stone kept inside the Ark of the Covenant. Now the law is written on fleshy tables of the heart. When the law is written on fleshy tables of the heart, that is baptism. That's true baptism. Now, let me, let me read here. Verse 5, And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad. I'm not, I'm not through with this yet. We've got to go a long way to get through this shed abroad. We're going to go into tongues, dialects and glossa, foreign languages and dialects. We're going to go into that uh, before this is over with. Do y'all realize how much there is to learn about baptism? I like what, uh, I think it was Harry Boltema. He says, uh, yeah, he says, not one of the great institutes seems to have mustered enough courage to state boldly their creedal stand in this matter of baptism. And even in many seminaries, the trumpet does not give a certain sound in regard to this grand doctrine of the Bible. They don't have any idea what it means. They both of them, Mr. Dale and Mr. Boltima, they, he says, he says, of all the grand doctrines of the Bible, baptism is is in Christendom the most shunned. It scares people more than anything else. I was raised, my father was a Methodist song leader till I was 10 years old, 1949. He became a Baptist preacher. And I've been listening to baptism and baptized in water ever since I was a little kid. And it didn't make any sense to me when I was a kid. And I had to come up and I had been questioning this since I was about 10 or 11 years old. Why do I have to be dipped in water? I don't understand anything spiritual about this. He says the most, it is the most shunned. It is the most misunderstood, misconstrued, and misapplied. What can be the cause of this strange confusion concerning baptism? It's because nobody really wants to know what it means. Being an infinitive, it does not mean to immerse. And without a blood baptism, you're not going to heaven when you die. Our robes are made white in the blood of Christ, and the bride was dressed.